Hi there and welcome to the wood shop. I may have bought a few clamps. Okay, so I actually bought 12 of these and these are all 24 inch trigger clamps. I wanted to find out how they stack up one against the other and see which ones are actually worth your money. The clamps we're comparing today are specifically one-handed trigger clamps. If they don't meet that criteria, I'm not including them in this particular comparison. Now when it comes to special features, eight of these have really nothing out of the ordinary. They're just standard clamps, they do their job, but four of them do have some special features worth looking at. The Irwin 600 pounder has a couple of cool features. Number one, it's got pivoting heads on both sides and you can actually pull those pivots off and just replace the pad directly if you need that straight perpendicular pad. The other nice feature is it has a little stand, so if you do want to hang the trigger end of your clamp off the edge of a table like this, it can stand upright on that little stand and the other end of the clamp. Pretty convenient. Its little brother, the Irwin 300 pounder, has one of those pivots on the outside end, but not on the inside, and does not come with the stand. The Jorgensen has one really special feature up its sleeve, and that is that you can replace the ends like this, swap them around, and then those two pieces fit together like puzzle pieces, making one huge clamp. So with that, the two trigger ends come apart and you get a 54 and 5 8 inch clamp when you put two of these together. That is a pretty sweet feature. The Bessie Duo Clamp has several things going for it. It's called the Duo Clamp because it has pads on both sides of the bar, which is really convenient. You can use it to push or pull, and then my favorite thing about this by far, and the reason I go to this one quite a bit, is because of the orientation or ergonomics of the trigger. It's in a great spot. Additionally, you can actually just twist this knob right here to make it go forward or backwards for spreading or clamping. It's a pretty cool set altogether. The next thing I wanted to figure out is how many squeezes does it take to get to the center of the lot to uh, travel 24 inches is what I was going for. So I marked the exact spot on the bar where it was in one spot, pulled the trigger completely, and then marked how far it had moved after I moved my head. So for results, all three of the 600 pounders tied at last place with 163 squeezes, and the Pittsburgh Heavy Duty wins with only needing 44 squeezes to travel 24 inches. Next up, let's see if the clamp force rating on each of these clamps lives up to its claims. Like this one, for example, this DeWalt says 300 pounds over there, so we're gonna see if it can actually pull 300 pounds. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, there's two other things we're testing at the same time here. Let's see how much these things bow, because we don't want a huge massive bow going on. The second thing we'll test is how hard is it to release. So, let's see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna start out with the Irwin 600 pounder. Let's see how many pounds of force this thing can pull. Okay, that went up to over 630, and it's sitting at 625 right now. <sighs> Error, oh wow, I wonder if this one peaks at 650. I think it does. <sighs> yeah, 670. Okay, this is sitting at 668 right now. Very difficult to squeeze and definitely bowing quite a bit. And let's see if it comes down to the 670 range or not. That means we're over 670. All right, there's our arc on the, on the bar. Now the next thing we'll test is the release. I hope this thing does, oh wow, we're at 680 something. Okay, so this one goes over 680. And so definitely holds up to its uh, 600 pound rating. I'm a little afraid to do this, but here we go. Ooh, this is this is hard. This is a two-hander. Ah. Definitely a lot of force to release at 680 plus pounds, but it did the job and well surpassed the 600 pound rating. Now on this shortened version of the video, you're going to see a lot of the results in a pretty quick fashion to see how these different clamps compared one to the other. I do have a full length video if you want to check that out over on my woodworking channel right here. You can also see all of the results in our spreadsheet that we put together with all of the stats and how everything came out, and that's on our website, and there are links in the description below. Now I put together this quick infographic for each of the clamps, including a bunch of stuff that I measured off screen that we're not gonna include in the video to keep this thing from being like 240 minutes long. So you can see on the clamping force, this one rated in at 114% of its reported capacity with 680 pounds or 309 kilos. It's got a couple of cool bonus features. You can see some other specs on the bottom in case you're interested, and I'll show those with each of the clamps, but you can get full details on all of this on my website at learntodiy.com. Links are in the description. Next, we're gonna work on the Bessie 600 pounder. There we go. Got a decent little bow going on. Ooh, geez, that freaks me out. Okay, uh, hold on, I gotta go change. 
The Bessie 600 also scored 114% of its reported capacity with 680 pounds. Next up, let's test the DeWalt 600 pounder. So this one, same, just it'll go over what it uh, claims by quite a bit. The DeWalt 600, very similar to the prior two, 114% of reported capacity and very above average when it comes to comfort. This is one I'm probably most curious about. We're gonna test the Bremen from Harbor Freight, rated for 375 pounds. <sighs> My weak little body can't handle it. 429, yeah, basically we're capping out around 430. The Bremen had almost the exact same reported capacity as the prior three with 115%. When it comes to price, the Bremen actually comes in at just over half of most of its competitors. Next, we're gonna try the Irwin 300 pounder. This is like my workout of the week here. 404, I just worked out last year. I don't know why I'm doing this. So I'm learning that there is kind of a threshold for these. You kind of get to a point where you squeeze all you want and it can't really get any more out of it. So 430 in this case, pretty darn good. Let's test the trigger release on this guy. Is this dorky or what? I'm gonna use a clamp to release a clamp. You know, desperate times. Here we go. Yeah, that's the way to go. That's so much easier. <laughs> Woo, okay. The Irwin 300 has our best reported capacity so far at 143% of what it claims. Next is the Bessie 300 pounder. This is as much workout as I get. Oh, we're up 436 here. The Bessie 300 comes in at 145% of its reported capacity. Next up, we have the DeWalt 300 pound setup, 424. So actually very comparable to the other ones we saw. Not too bad at all. The DeWalt 300 also comes in well above its reported capacity with 141% there. Next up is the Jorgensen 300 pounder. Whoa, this is a beast, 590. We're sitting at 590 on this thing. It's rated for 300 pounds, oh my gosh. So let's see how the trigger release goes. Easy, okay, impressive. That was really easy to release, went way past its range and was pretty strong, that's pretty cool. The Jorgensen 300 is the best one we've seen so far as far as what it claims to actually be able to squeeze and what it does. 190% of reported capacity. It does have that super cool interlocking design, so a nice bonus feature. It's super slidable. This one is about as good as it gets when it comes to mounting this thing onto a rack. Deflection is pretty average. Squeezes per 24 inches, above average. Releasability, also quite a bit above average. And it's super comfortable as well. Next up, this one I'm super curious about. This is the Pittsburgh that's rated for 287 pounds. These things are dirt cheap, so I'm, that's why I'm curious to see what it can do. 343, I think that's about where we're peeking out. This thing's rocking up into the, whoa. Oh look, I broke it. That's actually kind of exciting. <laughs> so I broke right up here at the head and it was at about 480 when it did that. I'll check on the playback, but definitely took it way past. But this is our first break. It's kind of exciting. Rest in peace, little guy. So the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh 287 pounder came in at 120% of its reported capacity. Next, we're gonna try the Bessie, and this is rated at 280 pounds, but remember, I couldn't get this in the 24 inch, so I'm just testing out the 18 inch. This is so much con more convenient, by the way, this design, I love this. So I think that's about where we're gonna stop here, is 308, uh, not bad. So this, that's uh, 28 pounds more than it's rated for. The Bessie Duo Clamp came in at 110% of its reported capacity, making it the least amount of all of the other ones as far as actual capacity versus reported, but all of them at least surpass the reported capacity by 10%. This one has some killer features on it and is by far the most comfortable to use in my opinion because of that angle of the trigger. Next up is the Wood River 180 pound rated clamp. So 414 on a 180 pound rated clamp, I'd say that passes the test, so pretty good. Way to go Wood River, this one was a surprise. This one came in at 230% of its reported capacity. All right, this is probably the one I'm most excited about. This is the $6 clamp. What do you get for six bucks? Let's put this thing in and find out. This thing looks just cheap and pathetic in all the ways, but is it? Let's use your cousin here to help you out. Okay, we're at 350. Now, obviously I haven't released, but I'm just... 
curious if that would happen <laughs> check this out we've got we got parts everywhere and no Nilses were injured in this video so at least not yet okay Harbor Freight's little six dollar clamp came in at definitely above what we maybe would have expected with 243 pounds and again it didn't claim any certain number in its advertising now because I had all this data I had to see just out of curiosity what does it look like as far as pounds of pressure per dollar that you get so as you can see here, Harbor Freight is definitely kicking butt in that aspect. There's so many other things to take into consideration here, but I thought you might be interested in seeing exactly how this plays out. Again, you can see a full chart of all of the compared specs, one against the other, on my website at learntodiy.com. Now, as I mentioned, you can check out the full length of this video right over here if you wanna see all the details and a little bit more of the slow-mo and different things that happened as we tested these clamps. Thanks for watching.